Hello friends, welcome back to Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL. I'm Luigi Fontana, professor of medicine and the scientific director of the Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic of the University of Sydney. Today we are diving into some eye-opening research that could change how you think about the impact of a healthy lifestyle on the risk of developing cancer, especially early onset cancer uh, those diagnosed before the age of 50. If you have ever wondered how much your lifestyle really matters, even if cancer runs in your family, this video is for you. First, I'll break everything down in simple terms for everyone to understand. Then in the second, in the second part of the video, I will dive deeper into the technical details of these fascinating findings on how we can reduce cancer risk regardless of our genetic background. Okay, first, first let's, let's set the stage. Early onset cancers are often more aggressive and challenging to treat. While genetics have long been thought to play a dominant role, the impact of a healthy lifestyle in countering genetic risk for these cancers had not been thoroughly studied until now. Now, the researchers of the study just published in uh, GNCI, one of the most prestigious cancer journals, uh, analyzed data from over 66,000 men and women under the age of 50 to uh, study how both genetic factors and lifestyle uh, choices influence their cancer risk. So here, what the research of this study uh, published in, uh, in, in GNCI found. Point number one, genetics do matter. Indeed, people with high genetic risk scores had up to three times the risk of early onset breast cancer and other cancer compared to those with lower genetic risk. Point number two, lifestyle is critical. This data suggests that maintaining a healthy lifestyle, which means no smoking, keeping a normal BMI, getting enough physical activity, limiting alcohol intake, eating a balanced healthy diet, was associated with significantly lower cancer risks, risks even for those with high genetic predispositions. Later, I will provide more details on how the researchers define factors such as a healthy diet, exercise, and alcohol consumption, etc., etc. Point number three, those at high genetic risk actually benefited the most from adopting a healthy lifestyle. Let me, let me repeat it because it's very important. This is a big takeaway. Those at high genetic risk benefited the most from adopting a healthy lifestyle. The risk reduction was even greater than for those at lower genetic risk. So what does this mean for you? Even if cancer runs in your family, you are not powerless. Your lifestyle choices have the power to significantly reduce your cancer risk. And if you are already living a healthy lifestyle, well, keep, going, keep doing it and uh, improve it if, 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 with, with, with more uh, changes, healthy changes, but this make a difference. That's important. Remember, small changes over time can have a huge impact on your health. As I've explained in many of my paper published in high impact factor journals like Science Cell, uh, Nature of Human Molecular Cell Biology, Cell Metabolism, uh, and many others, uh, lifestyles, diet, exercise, and other uh, uh, lifestyle factors are very important in shaping the metabolic molecular pathways. Uh, for lay people, I wrote uh, a few books uh, 
like the path to longevity or the manuals of healthy longevity and well-being with recipes exercise tips uh, on how you can improve your health to reduce your risk of multiple chronic diseases not only cancer cardiovascular disease diabetes fatty liver disease uh, diabetic nephropathy and many others uh, and then you know you can follow my videos on youtube where i'll try to explain to uh, people who are interested and uh, and smart enough to understand the real science the good science uh, how you can minimize your risk of developing multiple chronic disease and live uh, and increase your probability of living a longer healthier life so just to summarize for lay people this research i think is very important because it gives us hope and control genetics might set the stage but lifestyle helps write the script good okay now let's dive deeper into the technical details of this study for this is for people who have are more interested in 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 in, uh, in uh, the technical details first of all early onset cancer defined as a diagnosis of cancer before age 50 is often marked by aggressive clinical features and represents a distinct category of malignancies. In recent years, unfortunately, global incidence rates have, uh, have increased, likely driven by shifts in environmental exposures and their interaction with uh, our genes. But remember <laughs> that Current data, scientific data, show that approximately 40% of men and women will develop a malignant cancer at some, at, at some point in their lives. So it's not a small risk. It's almost one in two people in Western countries who will develop a malignant cancer during their lifetime. So that's why these data are very important regardless of your genetic background. So, study overview. In the UK Biobank study, researchers tracked 66,000 and, to be precise, 66,308 men and women under age 50 who were initially cancer-free. Over a follow-up period uh, uh, spanning 329,000 person years, 1,247 cases of invasive early onset cancers were documented. So basically, almost uh, uh, 1,300 cases of invasive early cancer were documented, including 386 cancer cases of early onset breast cancer. <coughs> The most frequent early onset cancer in this study for females were breast cancer, melanoma, colorectal cancer, and for males, melanoma, colorectal cancer, and prostate cancer. Okay? So this is in line with what we know. Uh, the key findings. How important are the genetic risk factors? So multivariable adjusted analysis with a two-year latency period demonstrated that individuals in the highest tertile of polygenic risk scores had significantly increased risks of early onset total cancer. The risk, the risk was 83% uh, higher for females and uh, twofold, two point AHR was 2.03 for males, okay? Uh, for females, for, for early onset breast cancer in females, the risk was threefold, so HR 3.06. For each one standard deviation increase in the polygenic uh, uh, risk score, uh, there was a 30% higher risk for early onset total cancer in females, a 37% higher risk in males and a 58% increased risk for early onset breast cancer. Okay? Now, how important were the lifestyle risk factors? First of all, uh, let's define how the uh, researchers uh, uh, 
basically created these uh, healthy associated lifestyle scores. So the healthy associated lifestyle score in this study was defined as number one, never smoking. Number two, maintaining a normal BMI in this study defined between 18.5 and 25. You know that, you know, I disagree because within this uh, 18.5, 25, there is a lot of <laughs> problems as we publish in BMJ. Uh, number three, engaging in, uh, in uh, adequate uh, physical activity defined as uh, at least uh, uh, 150 minutes of moderate activity per week or at least 75 minutes of vigorous activity per week or an equivalent um, uh, combination. Number four, having no or limited alcohol consumption. Having no or limited alcohol consumption. I already explained that, you know, alcohol is increased the cancer risk at any dose. So it's better, like in this study, define never or only on special occasions. Number five, following a healthy diet. In this study was defined as increased consumption of vegetables, whole grains and fruits and redu reduced consumption of red and processed meats. Okay, very simple uh, tool, is more complicated but good enough. So in this study, people who had an unfavorable lifestyle score were independently uh, uh, were at higher risk of, uh, uh, of, of early onset cancer, uh, particularly in those with high genetic risks. So people with an uh, unhealthy lifestyle risk, uh, risk score uh, uh, for uh, early onset total cancer in females, the risk was 55% higher. For breast cancer in female, it was 69% higher. So those who had an unhealthy diet had a 60 higher, 69% higher risk of developing early onset breast cancer. Strikingly, individuals with both high genetic risk and unfavorable lifestyle had a dramatically elevated risk for uh, for early onset total cancer for females the risk was two the hr was 2.55 and for males the hr was 1.69 and for early onset breast cancer the risk was four times hr 4.05 so women with uh, both a high genetic risk and uh, an unhealthy lifestyle had a fourfold higher risk of early onset breast cancer uh, now, the interesting part of the study is the interaction between genetics and lifestyle. While genetic and, and lifestyle factors independently contributed to cancer risk, evidence from this study suggested that a healthy lifestyle could mitigate the effects of a high genetic predisposition, particularly in females. The difference in a uh, cumulative cancer incidence between high and low uh, healthy, life sco healthy lifestyle score groups was statistically significant for early onset breast cancer uh, and uh, total cancer in females. These findings underscore the importance of lifestyle intervention in high-risk individuals and highlight the need for further research to optimize preventative strategy for early onset cancers. In summary, these findings reveal that both genetic predisposition and lifestyle factors independently influence the risk of early onset total and breast cancer. Stratified analysis based on polygenic risk scores suggest, suggest that adopting a healthy lifestyle benefits all individuals regardless of genetic risk and amazingly those with a high genetic risk appear to gain even greater preventative advantages as demonstrated by the significant supra-adaptive interaction between health uh, associated lifestyle scores and polygenic risk scores on the cumulative incidence of early onset total cancer breast cancer in female patients so these data could guide more tailored preventive strategies for early onset cancers across diverse genetic risk profiles. 
and uh, this is everything for today if you found this video helpful uh, just subscribe to the channel and share it with uh, anyone who needs a reminder that their choices matter no matter what their what their genetic say uh, thank you for listening this is uh, as always longevity now longevity now fl the youtube channel of the science and philosophy of uh, health and longevity uh, i'm luigi fontana uh, a professor of medicine uh, the leonard p Ullman chair in translational metabolic health the scientific director of the charles perkins center rpa clinic and the health for life program of the university of sydney i'm also a, a, a um, specialist of internal medicine and a clinical academic in the department of uh, endocrinology of the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney.